The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Kenny. ESPN is proud to present the 10th anniversary season of Sports Figures, teaming up math and science with sports. Today, Boston Red Sox catcher Jason Veritek tosses around the Pythagorean theorem with our Greg Abbey. Oh, a beautiful throw by Veritek to get Johnson at second. Let's look at that again. Just perfect. Even with Johnson's speed, you just can't mess with Pythagoras. Pythagoras! Right down the old hypotenuse and boom, you're out. Hypotenuse. Just a perfect use of geometry by Veritek. Geometry? You gotta love it. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. It's not unusual for a runner to steal second, right? <laughs> but how often do you see a runner steal third? It seems like a third would be pretty easy to steal because you can take a huge lead off a of second. Oh. And if a right-hander's at bat, the, uh, the catcher's gonna have to throw around him to get to third. Missed it. And the distance between the bases is exactly the same, so why not steal third? You're out! But third is harder to steal. How come? And how much harder is it? To help us figure it out, we have all-star catcher Jason Veritek of the 2004 World Series champion Boston Red Sox. So I think it's safe to say stealing on him is going to be pretty hard. So Jason, why is it harder to steal third base? I guess because the distance between home and third is a lot shorter than home and second, and it's a much shorter throw for us. OK, but what do you think? Is it like 10%, 20% harder? I don't know. You figure it out. All right, let's do that. Uh, well, we can measure the distance, right? But uh, then we'd have to go out and buy a really big tape measure. Come on, buddy, move it! Yankee fans. $67.99. Six, how much? $67.99. For a tape measure? Then you'd have to find a baseball field. Oh. Then you have to try and measure it. You see, I could do it from right here without even leaving my chair. Let's start by drawing the path of the ball from home to second. That's the distance we're trying to figure out. OK, so looking at this field, what's the first thing we notice? Now there are two triangles. That's right. There's one on this side and one on that side. How can that help us? If you make any distance problem into a triangle, you can figure it out. OK, triangles. How come triangles? Because geometry has all sorts of solutions for triangles, like the Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. The Pythagorean theorem is one of the most important and fundamental ideas in all of math. It's named for this guy, Pythagoras. He lived in Greece way back in 500 BC. BC, before calculators. No cell phones, no video games. These guys didn't even have cable. So the Pythagoreans had a ton of time on their hands to figure out stuff like math and geometry. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So what the heck is that supposed to mean? OK, so Jason, what can you tell me about the Pythagorean theorem? First off, it only applies to right triangles. OK, what's a right triangle? A right triangle is made up of one angle of 90 degrees. All right, so Jason, is that going to work for us here? Yeah, of course. The two triangles are right triangles because the baselines form right angles. You see, a baseball diamond is really just a square turned sideways. That means all the corners are right angles, 90 degrees. In geometry, you label an angle that's 90 degrees with an angle that looks like this. In any right triangle, the leg opposite the right angle is the longest, and it has a name, the hypotenuse. The other two sides are called legs. The legs get labeled A and B, and it doesn't matter which is which, but the hypotenuse is always labeled C. Hypotenuse C, hypotenuse C, hypotenuse C, hi. Why call it hypotenuse? 
Must have something to do with some Greek thing. Hypotenuse, hypotenuse. You can see A squared plus B squared equals C squared like this. Go ahead, guys. There it is. That's it. That's the Pythagorean theorem. I don't get it. You will. You will. It's OK. Pythagoras stated a relationship between the legs of a right triangle. That means the lengths of two sides of the triangle will tell us the length of the third. The path of the ball is C, the hypotenuse, and the other legs are A and B. Now, we know a baseball field is 90 feet from home plate to first base and another 90 feet from first to second, so we know A and B. Just do the math. A squared is 90 times 90, 8,100, and the same for B squared, 8,100. Add them and we get 16,200 equals C squared. 16,200 equals C squared. So we need to find the square root of that number. The symbol for square root is called a radical sign and it looks like this. So now our equation is the square root of 16,200 equals C. So can you tell me the square root of four? Sure I can, it's two. Sir, could you tell me the square root of 25? Um, that would be five. Ma'am, could you tell me the square root of nine? Three. Very good. Sir, could you tell me the square root of 16? Be four. Can you tell me the square root of 16,200? Sure, I can. It's two. 3,726. 250, 242. 100 and something. Pretty close. No? But there's no points for second place. No. Some square roots aren't so easy. In Pythagoras' time, they relied on tables of square roots that had already been figured out. Thankfully, all we need is this. OK, Jason, so can you tell me the square root of 16,200? Sure, that's easy. Just punch the number you want to know the square root for. Right. Hit the radical sign, and it's just as simple as that. OK, so what do we get? 127.27922. OK, so I guess not every number has a neat little square root like 4 or 9. Nope. Now, Pythagoras never played baseball, but there is a thing called the Pythagorean triple. Uh, here's a simple triple, 3, 4, 5. When the sides of a right triangle are integers, that's a Pythagorean triple. Uh, 5, 12, 13, that's another triple. There's an equation to find Pythagorean triples on our website, sportsfigures.espn.com. OK, Rhett. So Jason, obviously our problem, 90-90, is not a Pythagorean triple. Right. To be perfectly accurate, you have to leave the answer in simplest radical form. But for now, we can round it off at 127. OK, so that's it. It's, uh, it's 127 feet from home plate to second base. So that's 37 feet farther than going to third base. It's farther, so the chance of my throw being off are better. But even with a perfect throw, it takes longer for the ball to get there, so the runner has more time. That's why third base was stolen 115 times last season compared to 954 times to second. That's eight times as much. OK, 37 feet. But could 37 feet really make that big a difference? So Jason, from home plate to second, how fast do you throw the ball? Well, we're not necessarily judged by, uh, on miles per hour as much as we are on times. OK, so if, if, you, uh, if you had to put a miles per hour on it, what would you say? Somewhere around 80 miles an hour. Ah, you're out! 90 feet, 80 miles per hour, that's going to equal 0.76 of a second for the ball to get to third base. To reach second base, the ball takes 1.08 seconds. That's 0.32 seconds longer. Now, that might not seem like a lot of time, but look how many close calls there are in the major leagues. <sighs> For the major leagues, 0.32.
two seconds can easily make the difference between safe and out. I was safe. Okay, so 0.32 of a second means a runner has 41% more time. Uh, 41% better chance of stealing second base. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so Jason, what else can the Pythagorean theorem do? It also proves that a triangle is a right triangle. Well, that makes sense. If C squared equals A squared plus B squared, then it's a right triangle. Okay, now wait a minute. How do we know what Pythagoras said was true? Huh. Let's see, 127 how do you measure 0.27922 of an inch? Uh, you can prove Pythagoras is right this way, but a theorem can also be proved using math. It's called a proof. Pythagoras' theorem was proved tons of different ways, like we did before. Let's say you wanted to buy grass to cover the infield here. It's a square, right? So to find the square area, you would just multiply 90 by 90 to get 8,100 square feet. So the square infield is a picture of 90 squared. OK, guys, so tell me how these squares prove the Pythagorean theorem. The squares are pictures of a squared and b squared. OK. There's an a square, or a squared, and a b square. If the a square and the b square can equal the c square, then Pythagoras was right. OK, but Keon, how do we get a plus b? Just add the squares. OK. Take the bigger square of b. Right. And add it to the c square. Now, wait a second. The, the a square is not going to fit. Well, you can take the a square and break it into smaller pieces to make the c square. Huh. But you guys, is that allowed, uh, breaking it up like that? Still the same area of A squared, just rearranged. Hmm. A squared and B squared do equal C squared. Proof! Pythagoras is right. Uh, Jason, just so you know, uh, none of this is going to make you a better ball player. No, maybe not. But uh, you'll be smarter. And that's a good thing. OK, you guys, so what did we learn? That creating a triangle can help you solve distance problems. A right triangle has one right, or 90 degree angle, and the side opposite is called the hypotenuse. And if you have a right triangle, you can solve for the legs using the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and C is always the hypotenuse. And the theorem is something you can prove, and that's called a proof. All right, and that's proof that we learned something. So that's it. I'd like to thank Jason Baratek of the Boston Red Sox, our students, Sierra, Nikki, Kristen, and Keown, Fort Myers High School, and the Green Wave varsity baseball team for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures. Pythagoras is triple. Baseball took off in America in the mid-1800s. It was so popular that they called the Baseball Revolution. But it took another revolution to make baseball and professional sports possible. Before the 1800s, most Americans lived on farms. A town could be a day's ride away, so it made it a little hard to get crowds together. And people didn't have a lot of free time. Whew. The revolution began in Europe in 1750, the Industrial Revolution, and it changed the way we work. And the way we play. Uh, Jason, could you sign this for me? Just, oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, perfect, perfect, thanks. Mass production meant factories, and they needed a large labor force nearby. By 1860, half the U.S. population had moved to cities and towns. 
Baseball became the national pastime because people now had time to pass, and they lived close enough to get to the events, events like baseball. In 1845, the New York Knickerbockers Baseball Club wrote down the rules of baseball. In 1865, when Manhattan played Brooklyn for the championship, 20,000 fans attended. It took the Industrial Revolution to create the Baseball Revolution. Play ball! Ugh. We hope you've enjoyed ESPN Sports Figures. Until next time, keep your brain in the game. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for watching. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at sportsfigures.espn.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports, sports Figures, put, put your, your brain in the, in the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.